Hi guys, welcome back to Exmo Lex. As you can see, I am joined again today by my husband, Brendan. I know you guys love it hey. when he's in the videos. <laughs> anyway, today we're doing a Q&A video, except for all the questions are directed at Brendan. Oh no. Are you ready? <laughs> sure, I'm ready. <laughs> I knew there would be a lot of people interested in watching a video like this and asking you questions because everybody's always so excited when you're on the channel. It's the beard, <laughs> nothing else. Let's get started and read you some of these questions. Okay. All right. If aspects of religion at one time provided you with comfort, feeling of being loved and hope for the future, where do you get those feelings now? Family, obviously, and metal is <laughs> a big one for me and also video games. Family and metal and video games. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite Disney princess? <laughs> uh, Mulan. Mulan's pretty badass. Yep. Somebody asked for your top 10 video games, but I'm gonna say that's a lot. Let's do five. Top five. Smash Bros, the entire series. If I had to pick one though, Melee is what I mostly played competitively. I used to be um, number one in my state for a short period. Back in 82, I used to be able to throw a pigskin a quarter mile. Also like Ultimate, play that a lot right now. So Smash Bros as a series, but my number one game of all time is Majora's Mask. So it's like Majora's Mask, Smash Bros, it's tough. Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time. So there's like two. I really like Metroid Prime, one and two the most, three is okay. Big fan of OG Fire Emblem, uh, six, seven, and eight on the Game Boy Advance. Pokemon, I guess? I think you're at like top 10 by now. Yeah. <laughs> How did you feel after your first time taking out ordinances? So first time through the temple. You know, not much. I didn't feel much. <laughs> it was very like, okay, this is boring churchy stuff. Let's go along for the ride, get through it and go home so I can do something else. That was kind of my entire thought processes through all of church for my entire life because I just wanted to get through it and be done so I could go do something more fun. I think I like pushed to feel a little bit of spiritualness there. It just, I didn't get any like weird like culty vibes or anything. It was very like, oh, I'm here with my family and it's very normal to them. So it's just another one of those like, eh, normal boring temple things that we do. That's so funny. Cause it's like so different from the way I felt about it. Yeah. <laughs> What inspired Brennan's first battle jacket? If you don't know, that's what this, this guy right here is. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm up to 15 or 16 in the works right now. Uh, my first one was inspired just by, I don't know, I really love metal and rock music. And so I was kind of like, I'd bought a couple patches from shows and I liked them. They were the embroidered ones though. And so it was like, I kind of liked those and started looking for more, couldn't really find what I was after. So I started like custom making some of my own in Photoshop, just like logos and stuff. And then like custom ordering them from some guy in Mexico. Then like slowly as time went on, I started to realize like the woven patches, which is the ones with like the album art that are more highly detailed and everything are like, more sought after and more collectible and all that. And so I just, I don't know, I kind of toyed with the idea of making one for a long time and eventually was just like, yeah, I like enough bands that I feel like I could do this. And I, my first one was just kind of a mess and it's still a mess and it's not done. It doesn't have a back patch on it. It's just kind of, I wanted it to be like a, there was a lot of like rules as to what you were supposed to make yours look like and I kind of wanted mine to be like a middle finger to that because part of metal is not conforming to rules and uh, doing things your own way and so I wanted mine to be different and get as many bands on there as I possibly could and all of those things just kind of over time I was like yeah let's do this and then I got addicted. Now I actually run a small patch distro myself if you're interested in that, um, we can leave a tag or something in the description or I can leave it in the comments, but um, I design my own patches now. I work with bands and get their approval and send them designs and then get them manufactured and sell them on a website, so. I'd say it's kind of like a, almost like an artistic outlet at this point. Yes. With how serious you are about it. From a fellow beard bro, what products are you using? <laughs> I just use Mad Viking. I have an oil that's like a cherry and tobacco scent. 
and I really like that. It's one of their like highest ranked or vote, highest voted, reviewed, highest reviewed beard oils. So I just use that. Um, I have some beard conditioner, but I actually don't use that that often. I kind of just use head and shoulders. I really just use oil like after a shower and then I have like a wooden comb that I use and I blow dry it. Another beard question. <laughs> <laughs> the beard, isn't it hot in summer? How does he stand it? It's not that bad. Once. I think a lot of it has to do with grooming. So if you keep it groomed, well-groomed, and you're brushing it, I brush it every day, it breathes really nicely. It's actually not that bad. I get a little bit of like beard sweat right underneath. It's not that bad. It's, it's about the same as when I had like just regular facial hair and a short goatee. I think there's the misconception is that like it's heavier than it is because of the way that it looks. It's actually super light and free flowing. So like, it's not like sitting heavy on my chest and like making this area sweaty. Easy breezy cover beard. Yeah. What's the top three concerts you've been to? Top three concerts. Okay, I've seen Cattle Decapitation three times. I saw them in Salt Lake with Carcass and that's gonna be one of my number one concerts. Not really any particular order, because I try to go to a lot of them. He goes um, to a lot of concerts. <laughs> Frozen Soul was really, really good. Um, obviously, the times that I've seen Boston, they're my favorite band, and Megadeth. And then I saw Dream Theater in college, and that was kind of mind-blowing. They were, like, so crisp and sounded just like their, uh, their studio albums. It was, like, mind-blowing. Um, Avatar also... I could go on and on. <laughs> when his parents made a late night drop off at your home, did he confront them? No. There's things they're talking about when they left all that stuff on our porch. Yeah, no. We were asleep. We didn't even know that happened until later. Yeah, that morning. Yeah. It was like two or three in the morning when they did that, so we were asleep. No, uh, once we stopped contact, we, we like, literally there's been zero contact since then. And I've wanted it that way because all they want to do is argue. Did you have any shelf items that held you back from sharing prior to Lexi's faith crisis? Yeah, some. I'm, I mean, I had a handful. I'm not 100% sure of what every single thing was at this point. But, like, I mean, obviously the who could and couldn't have the priesthood power was kind of a big one for me in the back of my mind. The whole pioneer trek and everything and all that and why they were really being pushed to, to the west kind of sat weird with me for a little while it was always like okay but why would people just like hate on us for like having these beliefs i always felt like there was something more and there was but i didn't know <laughs> that at the time uh those would be two of the like big ones i think but i mean there were a handful of of little things Things like uh, just being treated differently at church when it was supposed to be like, everybody's a family and we all love each other. I'd get weird looks and all that sort of stuff for either the music I liked or what I would draw or whatever, especially in college. Are you approached by family or friends about being married to an anti-Mormon? <laughs> well, I'm one too, so. <laughs> but before that, before I had you on my channel or anything like that, there was not really, we we have been together on all this from the very beginning. Yeah. So. What's your favorite dinosaur? Either a Velociraptor or a T-Rex, probably. Lame, Munchy I know. kind. <laughs> <laughs> Who is he voting for in 2024? Kamala. What attracted him to you, and is he also an Exmo? Yes, I have been an Exmo the entire time that she has. <laughs> Tons of things. <laughs> You can't just say tons of things. Uh, there's too many to describe, like her eyes, her personality, her interests, her <laughs> aura, her everything. Her aura? Her I bod, love... <laughs> her everything, okay? Ask him if he believes in divorce, and more importantly, does he believe in separation of church and state? Separation of church and state, big time. And divorce, yeah, like if shit ain't working out, separate. Don't. Don't cheat on each other, separate and figure it out. You have strong feelings. <laughs> yes. Somebody asked, what's it like being married to Lex? Fantastic, <laughs> obviously. Best wife ever. Aw, sweet. <laughs> if you couldn't tell. Making me blush. <laughs> 
Um, somebody asked... Plot twist. This isn't a QA and a about me. It's a make Lex feel incredible. <laughs> Have you had any gay experience in the mission living 24 hours with another guy? As far as, like, me being gay or, like, people trying to come on to me, like... I think either. I... My trainer did some stuff that made me uncomfortable. He would play this game where, like, he'd be like, guess what state I'm thinking? And then he'd put his hand on my leg and would, like, grab so hard and I'd, like, sit there and try to pull his arm off of my leg. And every time I... He's like, guess, guess! And he, like, wouldn't let go. So I'd, like, say a state and he'd move his hand closer to my crotch. Fun times. I don't roll that way. <laughs> that was really rude of him. Yeah, not... He never did it again after I slugged him in the arm a couple times when he let go. <laughs> Somebody asked if they could see a close-up pic of your vest and they wanted to see the back patch. So we'll put some of those up on the screen. Yeah, you can just... And his Instagram. We'll put his Instagram so you can go find it. Yeah, he posts pictures of like all of the patches. <laughs> yeah, I have two Instagrams. I got my personal and I got my patch distro. So go give me a follow or whatever and you can see the different vests I have and patches in my collection, band shirts, that sort of thing. And see what bands I'm working with for my official stuff that I'm making. What are your interactions like with active members? Are they accepting of where you are, judgmental, or have shunned you? Or have they shunned you? Well, immediate family has shunned me. Some close family is like okay with us, but they act very like nothing happened. They just kind of don't really go there. Your Her family is much more like open and kind of nuanced about a lot of it. I feel like for my family it would be a very touchy subject, so we don't really talk about any of it. I've seen some, like an aunt and an uncle and some cousins recently, and it just doesn't even get brought up. That's kind of how it is on my side of the family, it seems like. Yeah. So. What aspects of your life do you feel you've been able to thrive in as an individual since leaving? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's been better. Mental health has been leagues better than it was. Free time, spending time with other people is more fun. Being able to pursue an interest like making my own patches and stuff was something that I probably wouldn't have thought of as a member because metal, at least for the most part, is kind of frowned upon. Yeah. Everything, I would say. Work has gotten better, like the sex. <laughs> So the next one is kind of similar. What hobbies and activities do you enjoy now that you felt as though you couldn't enjoy before? And what held you back from these things while you were a member? Uh, I mean, I still enjoyed listening to music and I still went to some concerts, but not as many and definitely not some bands that I have gone to now that are like either more blasphemous or satanic or like... A lot of heavier stuff. Or like brutal, like, yeah, brutal death metal stuff that's like very horror and gore influenced. Watching certain movies for sure. Everything rated R. <laughs> yeah. And some PG-13. Everything was just held back by like, because when we, right before we left, we were trying to be like letter of the law. So like literally everything that was a rule we were trying to. Movies, music, I mean music, we were like editing all the swear words and stuff out of songs and I was being very choosy about what I would keep so after leaving it was just like the floodgates open I was like fuck it I'm listening to <laughs> anything I want to now because it doesn't matter and it doesn't. Alright let's end on this one bands he is currently loving slash listening to. Atomic Witch is the number one and you should go check them out if you haven't I have done patches for them they are freaking amazing death thrash metal with some blackened influence and like if you dig like some high-pitched like King Diamond or like Tom Araya Slayer whales here and there there's some of that. Atomic Witch, Helm's Deep, I believe they're from Florida with members of Raven, an older heavy metal band. Um, they're freaking phenomenal. I've done patches for them too. Unto Others, Condition Critical. These are like all bands that I've been able to work with, which is awesome. Spoiler, I'm going to be doing patches with these guys soon too. Um, Jarhead Fertilizer. <laughs> the names are hilarious, but like they're so freaking brutal live. So the, the, that was really fun. I reached out to them and I'm just waiting to hear back, but I've already got the approval to do patches for them, just waiting on which designs they want to go with. So well, there you have it. Now you know a little bit more about Brendan. This weird guy. And <laughs> his interests and the things that make him happy and the way his brain thinks. 
Yeah, I hyperfixate on a few things, as you can tell. We got the metal, we got the video games, what else? I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you had fun learning a little bit more about Brendan. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Special thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. You guys are the best. And extra special thank you to Amy and Doug Davis for supporting the demon tier on my Patreon. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> Tune in next week for some more content. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. <laughs> you love me.